an enormous milestone. To our knowledge and our recollection, no one has ever ordered an order of this magnitude, and it speaks to the potential of Indian aviation and the ambitions which Indigo is having. Indigo CEO Peter Alberts there for more. Let's bring in Katrina Nicholas, who leads Bloomberg's Asia Transport coverage. And Katrina, what does this really tell us more broadly about aviation, and particularly aviation in India? Yeah, so this is really a sign of how extraordinary the growth in India's aviation market is expected to be. Now, as you mentioned, the most populous nation on earth and quite literally hundreds of millions of people who haven't taken a plane before. Deal eclipses are purchased just only a few months ago by Air India for 470 aircraft from Boeing and Airbus. And it brings Indigo's own order backlog close to 1,000 planes. Uh, we had from Indigo CEO Peter L. But he put it quite simply, saying, you know, he's confident the demand is there to absorb such a massive expansion in capacity as this increasingly mobile Indian middle class discovers air travel for the first time. And, you know, Indigo itself is an extraordinary growth story. In the space of less than two decades, this carrier has gone from a startup to India's main airline with a market share exceeding uh, 60 percent. Air India, meanwhile, yeah. is also trying to capture some of that market potential it's reinventing itself under the new ownership as part of the Tata group. Yeah, and they're set after this deal to, to really dominate the skies there. Uh, meanwhile, let's talk about Sing Air and, and Catholic Pacific because, I mean, just given the, the gap that we're seeing in market cap between these two, two airlines now, you can really see the different paths that are being paved out after COVID. Yeah, so two, again, two very dominant carriers in other parts of Asia and both unique in that they've got this huge international network, but really nothing to speak of domestically at all, given the small size of Singapore and Hong Kong. But despite that, Singapore Airlines is really coming back a lot faster. You can see it in the market value. Singapore Air is about uh, $17 billion. That's almost three times that of Cathay. Four years ago, the difference was only about $2 billion. You can also see it in the earnings. Singapore Airlines posting record profit recently of 1.6 billion US dollars for the year ended March with capacity already back at about 78 percent of what it was pre-COVID. Cathay meanwhile has said it only expects to get to about 70 percent of pre-pandemic operations by the end of this year and yeah that's because Singapore opened up a lot faster while Hong Kong was locked down a lot longer and also subject to China's strict COVID zero measures to some extent as well and so because yeah. of that extended period Cathay battled with a staff attrition rate that was nearly 40 percent it also owes the government about 2.5 billion US dollars that was extended in That's a rescue right. package. So quite a different set of circumstances. Yeah.